And that's why we recognize our responsibility to do more, and that's what we are announcing here today, a statewide requirement for in-person instruction for all of our children to add to a well-established list that currently includes 10 vaccinations and well-established rules and regulations that have been advanced by the legislature for decades to add to that list the vaccination uh, for COVID-19. We intend to do that once the FDA has fully approved the vaccine, which will give us time to work with districts, give us time to work with parents and educators uh, to build more trust and confidence and build out a logistics so that we can deliver on what we are promoting here today. And that promotion includes the following considerations. Once the FDA approves the vaccination in different cohorts, starting with 12 and above, grades 7 to 12, we will begin to apply uh, that requirement in the next term, either January 1st or July 1st, whichever comes sooner. Concurrent with that, we also want to see all of our staff, paraprofessionals, not just teachers, bus drivers, custodial staff and the like, the folks that really make the school system operational, also see them get vaccinated as well. Uh, and we will model similarly an FDA approval and work in concert, not only to apply and implement in parallel, uh, with all of those in grades 7 and 12, but on the basis of the guidelines and the regulations that will be forthcoming from the Biden administration as it relates to all employees, uh, we will consider uh, moving that forward. But in the absence of that directive, uh, we will be requiring staff uh, K through 12 to be vaccinated in that first phase of a two-phase application of this new directive. The second phase of that application is everybody K to six. Again, that will be months away. Currently, uh, we have in the state of California uh, administered at least one dose to 63.5% of all of uh, our young cohort ages 12 to 17. But we have to do more. Again, 84% of all eligible receive one dose but for 12 to 17, we're not where we need to be. And so we hope this encourages folks uh, to get vaccinated. We have no trepidation, no, um, well, no hesitancy in encouraging local districts to move forward more expeditiously. And you've seen that in a number of districts in the state of California that have moved forward uh, more quickly with their own mandates and own timelines. Uh, and we expect on the basis of other similar requirements that you'll see, start to see an uptick in people getting vaccinated well before those dates that are established. You've seen that with healthcare worker mandates. You've seen that with state staff mandates. And I'll just highlight um, there was an analysis in the New York Times yesterday about California's healthcare mandate uh, working as it was intended. Now north of 90 percent in some uh, regions of the state it's closer to 95, 96% of all healthcare workers uh, got that vaccination before the stated requirement went into effect at midnight last night. As it relates to the current vaccination requirements, I'll remind people the ones we announced a few months ago, they go into effect on the 15th of this month as it relates to mandates for either being vaccinated and or uh, getting consistently tested. So uh, we're building on that. We're leaning forward. We're anticipating a future uh, with the winter surge that has been the most challenging for this state and states like California in the past. Uh, we are mindful that we still have work to do. We are humbled by the challenge, uh, but we want to get this thing done. We want to end this pandemic. We are all exhausted by it. And the purpose of this is to continue to lead in that space. I believe we will be the first state in America to move forward uh, with this mandate and requirement, but I do not believe by any stretch of the imagination will be the last state. I, in fact, I anticipate other states to follow suit as well. None of this is easy, and I recognize there's still anxiety out there, and I'll close by uh, answering a question that inevitably I'll be asked, and that is, are there exemptions? Yes, well-established exemptions for medical, reasons, personal and or religious beliefs. Those are established in these guidelines as well. And so today we are directing 
uh, the Department of Public Health, Dr. Galley is here, he can answer questions, uh, to move in this direction to establish consistent with well-established legislative guidelines for vaccinations uh, in our school system to include uh, this 11th vaccination uh, for purposes of in-person instruction in the state of California. With that, we are, of course, happy to answer any questions.